everybody. Welcome to Leaving Crazy Town with Finn and Sarah. How are you? This week, we're going to, uh, Finn's going to give an example of the anxiety of being a human being, which I'm sure you've all felt at one time or another. All right, Finn, take it away, my friend. All right, Sarah, thank you. It's actually more the anxiety of being Finn because it's far more difficult than just being a human being. Okay, all right. No, all I know of you're us, special, but... I'm very special. As human beings, we all have our different upbringings and methods of doing things, and, um, you yes. know, I'm trying to change me. Uh Boy, All right. easy. I, in I'll just give you. No love. Yeah, in relationship. So, quick synopsis: the first date I went on, um, fifth grade, I think, I was taken to Friendlies for an ice cream, and my date ordered uh, chocolate Jim Dandy with all chocolate ice cream, all chocolate syrup, and um, I hate chocolate. And what did I say? I'll have the same. I love the same thing. Yeah. I almost threw up because I hate, you know, but that's, that is like not a whole lot's changed <laughs> until recently. The and pattern I'm, was he, set. And I'm, I'm double nickels. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so from 10 to 55, we're still dealing with the same behavior, but <laughs> I'm actually changing it up a little. You're changing it up. You know, most of us, uh, no, like from prior videos that Finn likes to go from hello to I do. And Finn's working very hard at not doing that today. And when I did um, some writing and recovery going through the steps, the top requirement um, or the top thing on my ideal relationship person or person to be yeah. in a relationship list was I wanted to be in a relationship with someone I wanted to be in a relationship with. Which, because okay, sounds crazy, but it's critical. You would think it would be obvious. I had a pretty long sex inventory <laughs> list and not one person on that list would I say or believed at the time when I did that writing, did I want to be in a relationship with? So that's why it became the first thing. I was in relationships with people because they wanted to be in a relationship with me. And right. I, of course, wanted to feel better and I wanted to be loved and so forth. So, yeah. you know, this is my first real experience in sobriety dating. Yes, I was married, but there wasn't a lot of dating. We became <laughs> friends. And well, that's a whole nother video. Another episode. A, whole but nother a lot episode. of people can relate to this because dating and recovery is a huge topic. People yes. either like, move in, have sex the first night, and then they're married within a week. Or it's a lot of avoidance. Yeah, and that's really what I'm trying to work on is keeping my space. So, you know, the yes. other thing I always did in relationships was get in a relationship with someone else and either, like, um, I just kind of somehow assumed or whatever, right into, melded right into their life. Yes. Okay. All my friends get kicked to the curb. All my prior activities. Now, whatever their likes and dislikes are, they're yes. mine. And I'm not doing oh, that. I'm total taking, loss of self. Which I'm is taking so things crazy. slow. I don't want to end up a year or two down the line trying to tell someone like, this is who I am. And, and to me, what I learned in my writing and going through working on myself is that if I'm not honest about how I feel and what my wants and needs are, I'm not honest. It's not, they're not in a relationship with me. They're in a relationship with the person I think they want to be in a relationship with who's based in fear, who's agreeing to things because, you know, whatever. And I'm not saying, and Sarah, I'm sure you'll agree with this, that in relationships, there's negotiation. No, but we're talking about something very specific. We want to be clear where you become what you think they want, which is right. part of crazy rather than, being you, which is and making a conscious about. decision that yes. while I'm not super interested in going to the museum, I know it's something you love and I'll accompany of you. That's a different ball. That's different. Right. That's not what we're talking about here. So yes. give the me an best, example. The best example I can give is I've I've recently had some major breakthroughs. <laughs> and I'll give an example of yes. one of my breakthroughs. I'm dating someone now and um Typically, we spend weekends together, um, either at my place or hers. Not every weekend, but if we have the time, you know, we do. And what's happened a few times is 
the whole we're going to spend Friday and Saturday together and then part on Sunday. We don't part on Sunday. We end up spending the night. Then Monday morning, we're both going, you know, partying. So I I can't and I did not want to do that this weekend. Um, yeah. But I was like, how am I going to bring this up? Honestly, it started to bother me, especially Sunday morning. It started to get to me because I need space. And what I yes. noticed after a few days is I start getting agitated. Yep. And I start picking out things that I think are wrong with the person I'm dating. Yeah. Which and isn't about her. It, and it, it's not about her. It's about me realizing that I'm getting fearful to say what I want, but also yes. not wanting to just do what has happened in the past. All right. It's not easy for me because I'd rather not know that I need to speak up. That's probably probably common, right, Sarah? Like we'd rather not know. Head in the sand. There's nothing That's wrong right. here. Distraction. And what do we talk about all the time that that does not help Finn? It doesn't help us and it doesn't help the other person in our relationship. So it's a lose-lose and we want to win-win. Okay. We're going to run out of time. Quickly tell your so yeah, what so happened? trying to I was trying to figure out like how do I share how I'm feeling? And do it in a way that's not hurtful, even though it might hurt, right? Yes. So I I walked through the fear. I asked for help and I shared um, with my girlfriend. I said, you know, I know in the past we've, you know, Sundays turn into Monday. And, and there are times when I do want to, um, like during the day yesterday, I was like, oh, this stinks. This is going to end. And I wasn't thinking that before I spoke my truth, but the, the truth is I had to say it. So I um, told my girlfriend how I was feeling about not wanting, you know, I need time on Saturday night and Monday to myself and talked about how I feel about it. Yeah. And I can tell you this, it, I can't say how she was feeling. I mean, it was, it ended up fine. It was difficult for me to share this, but I also can tell you this. We had a great day after the talk. Of there course. were other things. There are other things that we talked about and we started having fun. And prior to that discussion, we were not having fun. Everything like that was going on with me was to try to push her away. So I wouldn't have to have the discussion. Um, yes. But so it, definitely brought us closer together. We ended up having a great day. I mean, a great day yesterday after the conversation. Right. So what you're saying, the benefits of being yourself, not letting the fear or anxiety get in the way, it benefits the relationship in a huge way. It makes you feel better and it makes you feel closer to your partner, which is huge. And physiologically we feel better because it's not all this blocked energy we're freed up so huge benefits so what would some tools be Finn, for this week for people struggling with this um well first try to get in touch with how you're feeling and what it is that's bothering you because that was yes. the first step for me was to sit and go wait why am i feeling the way i'm feeling it yes and Usually with me, it's something needs to be said or I'm not yes. being honest about something inside, yes. even with myself. Yes. Um, and then to just speak the truth. Yes. If you can't speak the truth yet, at least be honest with yourself about the truth. Yes. That you might be having some feelings. You could share it with someone else, get support. But we're saying, and this, of course, is the first tool in, co in the Co-Crazy book, Speaking Up, and we talk about it a lot. We're talking about different situations, but this is so critical to relieve all these symptoms that can come out of not speaking your truth. People can get depressed, they can get super anxious, they can get super angry. There's so many consequences for yourself and for your relationship. So we're leaving crazy town. Speak up this week. Be good to yourself. Be honest with yourself. Be honest.